Welcome everyone back to Spoiler Warning. My name's Tom Collihue and today we're going to be talking wrestling news. But first I want to give a, a quick apology to everyone for the issues that we've been having pretty regularly on Fridays over the last few days. I've reinstalled the software, I've done what I can to double check the feed coming through and I've done what I can when it comes to the internet providers as well. I've been in contact with a lot of people, it's been a stressful time. Also in general, we still had a lot of topics to cover on Friday, I will still be discussing most of those. There's only a small bit of new news unfortunately, news that uh, just came in over the course of the weekend. I have been, for the last five hours or so, in an intense, well, an urgent care unit, not an intensive care unit, different thing. An urgent care unit, my eldest daughter has, uh, has had some issues, which I'm not going to go into in detail, but she needed an urgent, an urgent care unit. Sorry, the Yorkshire came out there. She needed an urgent care unit um, after spending most of the day being ignored like she was dying at school. They eventually sent her home and we went to an intent, to an urgent care unit where they told her basically nothing wrong with your bugger off. It's been a stressful time so this is going to be a slightly different show there's plenty of new things to cover even though they were listed on Friday there's still plenty that's still relevant and that hasn't gone out anywhere else as of yet so I'm looking forward to diving into those but please be aware this will be a slightly different show I'm not going to be chasing likes I'm not going to be asking people to subscribe I haven't advertised the show on Twitter or anything like that I just want to get through the news, check the new system with the reinstall, with the new spyware checks that I've been doing. I've gone ballistic on this PC to try and make sure everything is working. And I want to get through it and I want to enjoy it. But we still have some news to get to. So I'll start with the newer news and the first piece of news I want to cover. Our top story today is as regards CM Punk returning to Chicago's Monday Night Raw. He's not returning to Chicago, he lives there. But he is returning to the WWE on tonight's Monday Night Raw and he is dead set on an encounter with Drew McIntyre. CM Punk was originally going to main event night one of WrestleMania against Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre stepped into that gap and he's been absolutely worth it. Now the WWE are trying to tempt him into signing a new deal by offering him CM Punk at SummerSlam. And Punk is going to be pushing towards that on Monday Night Raw tonight. He will make it clear what his intentions are and the idea is that CM Punk will be focused almost entirely on the World Heavyweight Championship. Much like Seth Rollins before him, who will be a little bit out of the picture over the next few months, CM Punk will replace Seth Rollins as the champion of the World Heavyweight Championship. While he's not due back anytime soon, SummerSlam seems a reasonable expectation at the moment for his eventual return, and I expect that is when we're going to see him pop up to wrestle. As regards to Night on Raw, though, CM Punk is going to be in town for WrestleMania. I would expect that tonight we will find out exactly what he's going to be doing. I don't expect to see him involved in the World Heavyweight Championship match directly. First and foremost, he can't wrestle. But in general, I'm excited to see what he does. There is, as I've mentioned previously, many people in the creative team eager to get CM Punk sharing a ring with The Rock once again. That seems likely, if not in... That seems possible, if not likely at this point in time. I'm going to catch you with a chat at this point. Not too much to catch you up on. As I say, I haven't advertised the show at all. Uh, we have plenty of people saying hi. Robin Dave saying, hey, Tom. Hope, how are you doing? Hope you got the internet straightened out. Me too, mate. Me too. Me too. Hcast, is any news on Rey Mysterio fighting at WrestleMania? A little bit, yes, uh, to come a little later on. Roger says, do you think WWE or AEW will sign the Motor City Machine Guns when they leave TNA? I think AEW will. Sai says, evening all and welcome back, Tom. Lovely to see you, Sai. And Sovic says, I hope your daughter is healthy. Healthy is a statement. Spider Boss says, hello, Tom. I think Roman exposed Cody on his promo on SmackDown. Courtney Louise says, hey. Hello, Courtney. And Michael says, hi, Tom. Hello, Michael. Uh, Spider Boss says, no apologies needed, Tom. Uh, problems happen. They do, unfortunately, quite a lot recently. Uh... Noob says, hello, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I know that was a lot to go through at the beginning of a show, but uh, it's very real stuff. Spiderboss says, when do you think we could see Mercedes Monet's in-ring debut? I'd imagine at the next pay-per-view. LF says, good luck with the stream tonight. Thank you, LF. I may well need it. And Leon says, hi, Tom. Hope you're doing well. Doing better. A lot happening. 
DM says, hi, Tom. Hope you're doing great. Unfortunately, I can't say great, but I'm still doing okay. Michael says his software really doesn't like Fridays. It doesn't. The fact that it happened at the exact same time as well, it's concerning to me. Spider Boss says, I think this road to WrestleMania has had a lack of a brawl in the main storylines. Only Bailey and Damage Control had some brawl. You wait for the pull apart between Rhea and Becky. DM says, I think McIntyre will beat Punk at SummerSlam, then they drag the feud longer to Survivor Series when Punk overcomes McIntyre to win the world title. Personally, I think SummerSlam is the moment for me. Evening, Ross. Nice to see you. LF says, do you see Liv or Jade getting a spot on WrestleMania? I see Liv. I do not see Jade. Andrew says, hi, Tom. Excited for WrestleMania 14. Next weekend's my birthday. This Saturday, also any news on what WWE are planned for Taker, Cena and Austin. More on that shortly. Uh, Zane, much like anyone who goes on Twitter. Yes, I have. Uh, nothing at this point, Richard. I don't have a source there. One says, I think Mercedes Money's first opponent might be Willow Nightingale. They seem to have automatically put that into action already. Hello, KJ. Nice to see you, mate. Says, are you okay? I missed something in the first few minutes. Sorry if you're doing bad and sorry about the stream last Friday. I'm not doing bad. There's just a lot. A lot right now. Uh, Sobic says, Fightful say Carmelo and Trick are tipped to go main roster around SummerSlam. KJ says, that's not quite accurate. KJ, can you clarify for me? Robin Dave says, I guess we're in the final weeks of Roman's title run. Possibly. And Spider Boss says, do you think Friday's Spoiler Warner could move to Saturday to avoid problems? That doesn't avoid problems. That means I don't have Saturday with my children. Chris says, Rhea Ripley, respectfully. Respectfully, Rhea Ripley. Dalen says, WrestleVote said in his Twitter podcast, whatever they're called, that Liv, Nye and Tiffany will be off Mania. Well, that may well be the case. Chris says, any idea as who you think will win the tag titles at Mania? Personally, I lean heavily towards DIY. Joe says, do you think The Rock will be on Raw tonight? I don't know at this point. DM says, at this point, Drew McIntyre and CM Punk's feud is way more interesting than Seth and Punk because Drew is making it this way. As for Seth, his new role seems to be Cody's sidekick in his feud with the Bloodline. Sovic says, clarifying, one source told Fightful Select Carmelo has been set for his main roster call-up since prior to the Royal Rumble and is expected to move up to the main roster full-time in the summer. That seems pretty cut and dry. Thank you for quoting directly, Sovic. Noob says, any updates on Asuka? Will she be active in time for WrestleMania 30? I have not got confirmation as of yet, but she has been involved in some action. I'd expect her to wrestle. One says, Tom, TK himself said Jennifer Pepperman is the one booking the women, yet people think TK is booking the whole thing. All he has is a final say. That is correct, as originally reported here. Sovic says, Rhea knows how to get everyone's attention. Sovic says, there's been pitches for the pair to continue their rivalry on the main roster after Stand and Deliver, but Williams' plans past the premium live event remain unclear. That would be pretty cool, to be fair. They could just bring it up. Chris says, someone posted an email from WWE about them needing a... I don't know what that is. Ellis says, hi, Tom, is there any word on Julia signing with WWE? I've never had a source on Julia. That has not changed any time recently. Next up then, Becky versus Rhea is going to open WrestleMania. That includes, of course, WrestleMania Night 1, which is the opener of WrestleMania. I've reported previously that having Becky versus Rhea open is a plan because originally Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley would have main evented Night 1 before the return of CM Punk made that change. Now, this does mean that Becky Lynch will take her uh, favoured second option, which is always opening the show. Becky Lynch historically opens a lot of wrestling shows, including against Bianca, including against um, Trish Stratus as well. So... Becky versus Rhea has been moved to the opening match of the of night one of WrestleMania. This move actually happened in November, and it's now starting to come up elsewhere. Becky is talking about wanting it, but she's been directly asked about it, so that is likely to happen. Becky and Rhea are at this point in time trying to get as many eyes onto the product as possible. While Becky is mostly pushing her book, and that is one of the things that the WWE will be pushing as a method to get her to sign a new contract, Rhea Ripley is just pushing herself in a way that is very much working. As many of you will be aware, Rhea Ripley has been trending on Twitter for the last five days. And that seems likely very much to continue. So Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley does now seem set to open night one of WrestleMania. And honestly, I'm thrilled by that. Dalen says, WrestleVotes also said Jade Bianca and Naomi versus Damage Control at Mania. I believe that was originally reported by Zero. DM says, Becky Lynn said she would like to open WrestleMania, I guess, night one. Ray says, do you think there'll be any call-ups after WrestleMania? Yes, I still suspect there'll be a draft. 
NH Carl says, and news on Braun Strowman. Not at this point in time, though the WWE have now decided what they're going to do is have him make a few more individual appearances. Right now, to my knowledge, he is cleared, but not cleared to wrestle. So he's cleared to be out and about and make appearances, but not wrestle. Leon hopes Drew comes out to Punk's music on Raw tonight, says it would be funny. I suspect that CM Punk opens the show before he says a single word. Here comes Drew McIntyre. Chris says, good shout on them opening the show. KJ says, good spot for them and good luck to everyone following EO. Roger says, have you read Becky's book? If not, will you be reading it in the future? I don't believe it's formally out yet, at least not in the UK. But yes, I'll absolutely be reading it and devouring it with avarice. King Azza says, do you think WWE is going to have Roman break Hogan's record? No. DM says, I cannot wait to see Chicago's reaction to Drew McIntyre and his face-to-face off with CM Punk. Mixu says, hello, Tom. What do you think regarding CM Punk's situation? Special guest ref or host? Neither. I suspect he'll be in some sort of segment, for example, a Grayson Waller segment. I don't think he'll be Grayson Waller, but I do think he'll be in a segment during those two shows, essentially a 10-minute segment where he tries to distract Drew McIntyre and just gets a little bit punked. Okay, Jay, gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for the clarification there. Nope, that is exactly what Jalen said, WrestleVote said. So, uh, KJ, what you're saying there is what has, in fact, already been said. Spiderboss says, It's been interesting how WWE has been introducing Bron Breaker to main roster fans. I've certainly enjoyed it. And Chris says, Drew has been killing it. Michael says, Becky's book is being released tomorrow in the States, at least. I don't have it on pre-order. I like going out and actually buying books, to be honest. I'm a nerd. LF says, Jey Uso said recently there could be more joining the bloodline. Jey Uso was directly asked, will there be more joining the bloodline? He said, maybe. H. Carr says, do you think Rey Mysterio shows up tonight and gets revenge on Dominic Mysterio? For me, that certainly would not be enough to call it revenge. Now, quite a bit of the news I had from Friday has been expanded upon, okay? Now that we've got a bit more information, now that it's Monday, but a lot of it was originally written and planned out on Friday. So be aware that some of these tangents are connected to it. For example, the top story on Friday was about Ronda Rousey's book. So I naturally went afterwards into John Laurinaitis. Now, I don't have more information on John Laurinaitis, so I move on there to Triple H. That's a tangent that's pretty easy to see if you consider what I was going to do on Friday. But we are now on to Triple H and Goldberg, which would have been big news on Friday. When Triple H first took over as Chief Content Officer, one of the very first reports I made here on Spoiler Warning was about Goldberg. I reported that Goldberg would not be returning under Triple H, and Triple H had no interest in Goldberg making any further WWE appearances. I also reported that in the weeks and months that followed, we'd see a lot from Goldberg trying to say the WWE Universe misses him and that they absolutely should hire him. This has all been proven true, especially recently when Goldberg decided he was going to burn that bridge. For a while, Goldberg played the Alberto Del Rio card. He'd occasionally talk about going back to WWE and claim that there were options and concepts and creative plans for him. There weren't. There were no options. Triple H made it clear that Goldberg would not be working under him at any point. And uh, despite the return of Vince McMahon, Triple H was able to win this battle. Goldberg seems to have now gotten the message and decided to go full hashtag Ryback. There are rumours that he reached out recently to the WWE and was rebuffed, which has now caused him to lash out. In a recent interview, Goldberg blamed Triple H for his lack of success in the most recent run. He also attacked Asuka as, and I quote, some Japanese girl because she broke his streak and also went after anyone who uses a spear, which includes Roman Reigns. Goldberg was not welcome under Triple H. He's now even less welcome. I'm sure we can all now see why. Zane says, who is your favourite women's and men's wrestler in 2024? I appreciate that you gave me 2024 there. So at this point in 2024, it remains Jay White. I was very sad when he didn't end up going to WWE. I was thrilled by that as a prospect. I don't watch as much AEW, but I love the fact that I've now seen him live and I tend to tune in for his segments. As regards women, Becky has always been the one for me, particularly because of a promo she cut against Daniel Bryan backstage 
right before the second ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, where she essentially said, why should I be a good person when people are rewarded for being bad people? These were the building blocks for the man Becky Lynch. DM says, what do you think about Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns' SmackDown promo? I think it could have been much better, but Cody was on fire. I think it was okay. I think, unfortunately, The Rock is carrying this now. No worries, KJ. Appreciate you saying that. Jamie says, hi. Welcome, Jamie. Spider-Boss says, with The Rock getting all the attention, we haven't seen much from Roman and Cody. Yes, and the WWE are actively trying to fix that now. Chris said I very much disliked Goldberg, but now I borderline hate him, especially for how he talked about Asuka. Uh, Khalid says, hey Tom, sorry I was late. I was watching Harry Potter 1, but happy to see you again. Yeah, Harry Potter's doing a lot of uh, lot of touring in the minute. Marcel says, hi Tom and chat. How are you all? I'm doing well, thank you Marcel. Welcome to the show. And DM said it's too early, but I think Gunter is winning the Rumble next year because Punk may be world champion by then and I would like CM Punk versus Gunter at WrestleMania 41 if they don't do Seth versus Punk. Seth versus Punk has been shelved pretty much indefinitely at this point. To my knowledge, they're not necessarily planning to bring it back, but they're waiting for the right moment. Joey says, hey Tom, do you see Andrade teaming with Ray against Dom and Santos at WrestleMania? I think that's a good shout, but it's not necessarily the news I've got right now. Crush says Goldberg talks about a retirement match, yet his last match was very fitting as a retirement match. Blue says, hi Tom, I miss going to the bookstore, did it a lot as a kid, but they're all gone near me now. You're not alone, you're not alone. I wouldn't necessarily say it's racist, Crush, she is Japanese, but it is uh, certainly misogynistic. Uh, Mixu, I am 35 years old, as you can tell by the silver in the hair, and oh my god, I'm going bolder. Oh my god, I'm going so much more bold. I will eventually be bald. I'm not ready for that conversation. Blue says, Tom, if they do the six women tag, do you expect the tag titles to be on the line? No, because that is not a tag team championship match if there's more than the tag team in it. Michael says, Goldberg's streak was inflated, then they started counting by about tens in WCW. They did. And um, Hugh Morris was in there about 20 times. Crush says, Asker is beloved in the company, no wonder he's not welcomed. And Crush loves Jay White as well. DM says, I think Seth should turn heel before the CM Punk feud. It makes sense and saves Seth from being booed because fans will be on Punk's side in that feud. I don't think there's any downside to a face versus face feud. Also, not everyone is on Punk's side. Crush says, I'm tempted to use my booking magic in 2K game to bring Jay White to WWE. Khalid says, hope Goldberg doesn't come back. Did not like him since he beat The Fiend. And Roger says, Goldberg has got a lot to say about WWE wrestlers. Chris says Cody should have commented on The Rock making Roman look like a side chick. That would be fun. One says, do you think TK will now stay away from Ronda and Goldberg? Thanks to the news by you. Seems like both are flight risks. Not necessarily with Ronda. Tony Khan does want to bring in Ronda Rousey. I've reported that previously, but Ronda is not exactly in love with wrestling right now. As regards Goldberg, that's always been a risk. Jalen says, who do you see coming up or coming back for Raw after Mania? Not sure on this one. There's a few I can definitely see swapping sides. For example, a Sheamus I can see swapping sides. I think Logan Paul would be going to Raw, but we'll see. The fact that Raw is going to Netflix means that I think it's going to become the A show, and I think Roman Reigns will be the guy. KJ says Goldberg hating on WWE. Is Tony offered him a deal yet? <laughs> Wrestler fan says how many more matches are going to be added to Mania 40? A couple. And Leon says Asker is more talented in her little finger than Goldberg has in his entire body. Joey says it feels like The Rock has taken away all the attention from Roman and Cody. The match doesn't feel that important anymore. And Hector says Goldberg's comments have made me appreciate Bret Hart even more and I never liked Bret that much in the first place. Spider-Boss says Goldberg's an ungrateful old man. WCW made him famous and Vince treated him as star, free world title reigns and beating talent clean in less than three minutes. Crush says Gunter squashing Punk like Wardlow is very likely. I'd bring Goldberg back so the Gunter can beat the hell of uh, the absolute crap out of him, but Goldberg wouldn't let that happen. So Vic says, I want to know, is there a chance for Killer Kelly going to WWE? Same chance there is of anyone else. Very unlikely. Roger says, do you know when Wendy Chu will return to NXT? I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know what's happened there. Thank you, Mixer. I appreciate that. Taylor says, if we're calling early Rumble winners, I got Drew. I think Drew might well be involved in the championship picture around that time anyway. Blue says, is The Rock carrying it or did The Rock steal it by changing the style of the program? A little from column A, a little from column B. They're not necessarily mutually exclusive. 
Noob says, Asuka didn't appear in the house shows over the weekend because recently Dakota Kai is wrestling. Yep, as first reported by myself. Chris says, Killer Kelly and Rhea Ripley in a respectfully match, but she'd be a good signing. KJ says, you've got news about LDF and LWO for Mania, maybe some multi-man tag with Dom and LDF. You've got a lot of moving parts. Dom, Santos, Berto, I Angel, Ray, Carlito, Wild, and Toro, and maybe Bad Bunny. DM says, it's maybe a hot take, but I think Drew and Seth have had more WrestleMania build than Cody and Roman because they feel more like Cody versus Rock. Wiggly says, I love Goldberg, I love Asuka, but when with Asuka on this one, did you see Asuka's retweet that took a subtle dig at Goldberg? Yes, because you DM'd it to me. Blue says, I get the vibe, we're looking at a big 10, 12 person tag. Uh, we already have one, the ladder match. Chris says, CM Punk will most likely be on Raw after Mania. Have you seen that reported somewhere, Crush? Wiggly says, I won't say we'll never see Goldberg again. Okay, we'll never see Goldberg in the WWE again. Chris says, oh damn, so you're expecting a full shift. The World Heavyweight and Women's World titles go to SmackDown. Not necessarily going there, because everyone I've mentioned would not be a champion at the time. KJ says, speaking of Sheamus, I thought Edge... Has his last WWE match not Sheamus too? Is he still hurt or is he creative or is creative not giving him much? He's still hurt at this point in time. Joey says, do you expect CM Punk to be announced as the host of Mania on Raw? Nope. Blue says, Tom, if Cody wins the title, will he be showing up on SmackDown until at least the draft so as both shows have a champ? If Cody wins the, champion, uh, wins the championship, he is on SmackDown. It will be an immediate move. Spider-Boss says WWE always has a preference for Raw. When SmackDown shines, WWE says the best of SmackDown and sends it to Raw. Joey says, do you see Triple H doing some call-ups after Mania? Or saving call-ups for the draft? I see him doing call-ups via the draft. King Gather says, with The Rock coming back, it reminds of WrestleMania 27. Focusing on a match that's not happening, but will be eventually. Wrestler Fan says, any news on Undertaker, John Cena, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Ping at WrestleMania 40? I'll be discussing that shortly. LF said, Matt Hardy was at Raw last week amidst his contract renewal. Do you think he and Jeff will ever return to WWE? I hope not. The way that uh, Jeff went out seems very unlikely. Joey says, do you see Bianca facing damage control at Mania? Uh, not Solo. Zovic says, is it possible Becky might beat Rhea since we'll open Mania XL? Everything is possible. Everything is on the table. Uh, Wiggly, your guess is as good as mine. Blue says the ladder match would be different than a 5v5 or 6v6, 6v6 tag match. True, it would be more carnage. Chris says I feel like Sheamus is a very likely candidate to beat Gunter. In fact, I'd go for that over Gable. Gable can beat Gunter for the world title in the near future. That's not going to happen. Zane says Killer Kelly is taking time away from TNA but still with the company Source Wrestling Observer. Which is funny because Peter Insider reported that she was done. Wrestling Observer then said no she's not. Then Peter Insider came out and called Dave Meltzer a liar, or at least said he was wrong about things. Wrestling media is just cannibalistic right now. Spider Boss, your guess is as good as mine. Right, I want to give a small life update before we get to the next piece of news. The next piece of news will be about Becky Lynch and Beth Phoenix. Small life update. Uh, next week, I'm putting in an offer on a house. Um, this is pretty big. I've only just started really looking, but I'm very interested in this one and I want to snap it up while I can afford it uh, and basically give my girls a home to, well, you know, a place to call home. Um, and, you know, if something happens to me, they'll actually have something that they can then either sell or just securely live in um, if anything does happen to me. So, um, as I announced, I am now looking at houses I'm putting in a bid for one this week. So I want to be very clear, any and all income from these streams, any and all income from these channels will now go directly to the fund for repairs on that house. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna get this one. It may take a few more months for me to get one that I'm happy with. But as I say, all income will go directly towards repairs for that house. So I'm just going to be really transparent. I don't want to be sat here saying, oh, I'll use it for this. I'll use it for this. For the moment, the income is not going to be going back into the business. It's going to be going towards my house. Please be aware of that when you make the decision as to whether or not to become a channel member, to make a donation, to become a subscriber on Twitch. Please be aware of that. That's the intention. If you choose not to support that, you are welcome not to support it if that's your prerogative. I just want to be transparent so we all know what we're doing here. 
Next piece of news as regards Becky Lynch and Beth Phoenix. Now, we've seen over the last few weeks Becky Lynch calling for a match against Beth Phoenix, primarily because so many people are asking her about dream matches and dream opponents. This is a dream match of Becky Lynch's for years now, so it's not surprising that we're seeing this in the headlines. In fact, it's far from the first time this has been in the headlines. Becky and, in fact, Beth Phoenix have both been pushing for the match since before Vince McMahon left his position as head of creative. Under Triple H, Becky started pushing again, but instead ended up working with Trish Stratus because of a number of different reasons. She was not unhappy about this. Beth Phoenix, when still under the wrestling contract with the WWE, was typically tied up with Edge's storyline, whatever that may be. By and large, they were trying to make the Rhea Ripley match happen, for example, though that didn't come off either. She was rarely considered as ready to wrestle due to a number of minor injuries and some classic bad timing. This is why Beth Phoenix vs Rhea Ripley didn't happen. The WWE, particularly Triple H, wanted to get that match over the line. Beth Phoenix is currently unattached. To my knowledge, she is not currently under WWE contract. And Becky is looking for feuds post Rhea Ripley. Personally, with Adam Copeland, formerly known as Edge, now in a competing company, I don't see it happening. But it would be a great moment for the WWE and AEW to get over their crap a little bit and make this one work out. I really hope it can actually come together. I just unfortunately don't see that happening. Crutch says, I'm still laughing at The Rock calling Meltzer's story bullshit. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're not going to screw around anymore. They're absolutely not going to screw around. I'm excited to see more of this. Thank you very much, Sai. A very, very generous donation, uh, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, and says, have a nice house. Thank you very kindly. There's a, there's a lot of work that needs doing. I need to check the roof. I need to check a leak that's over the attic. Um, I need to put carpets everywhere because there's no carpets. Um, and I need to also, other than just decorating, which isn't going to be my area, it's going to be my partner's area, every single door and door frame needs replacing. They've all been broken multiple times. This again is if I get the house that I'm looking at at the moment. Okay? It's not guaranteed. And uh, I don't necessarily have all of the money required right now. So I might have to be a little clever and move some things around for it. But I could have a family home, I could have an office space. I'm just, I'm very excited about these things. Thank you, Crush. Appreciate you. Thank you, Wrestler Fan. Thank you, KJ. Thank you, Blue, as well. I appreciate you. Thank you, Age Car. Thank you, Taylor. Keeping fingers crossed for you and your family and homeowner dad. Thank you very much, Taylor. Uh, Chris says, make sure you keep your room clean unless Meltzer. Unlike Meltzer, yes. Uh, Joey says, Peter Insider reported Motor City Machine Gun contracts are up soon. Do you expect them to go to AEW? I have no expectations. I don't know them. Alex says, hey, hello, Alex. Richard says, hello, Tom. Were people like Odyssey Jones, Cameron Grimes, and Alba Isla Vince decisions or they hardly, as they hardly appeared on TV or in creative plans? No, most of them were decided by uh, Triple H. Roger says, I want to see the greatest gimmick of all time return. Broken Matt Hardy. No weekly, I'm getting a mortgage. I can't outright buy a house, mate. You were here when I was brassic, when I had nothing, when I was broke. How rich do you think I've gotten the last three years? Wow. Hello, Cal, nice to see you, sir. Spiderball says, SRS and Meltzer arguing about who got right the news about MJF before double or nothing was really funny. MJF denying it all was even funnier. Yeah, SRS got it wrong but I don't think I've ever seen an apology from him. Wiggly says, that kind of economic security at stage in life, honestly, that's a huge achievement. Yeah, because I don't have that kind of economic security. Like, that, that's completely incorrect. Silva says, congrats, Tom, and I'll support you in this. Thank you, Silva. I appreciate you very much for that. Chris says, I'm surprised Beth hasn't joined her husband in AEW. As I said, there's been a number of different um, small minor injuries. Pete's asking for first dibs on the cupboard. I think Connor's still in there. He's been in there for a while. Haven't seen much from him. I should probably put some food in there. Would be handy. Chris says Beth versus Rhea could happen at SummerSlam. Could. I suspect Becky versus uh, Rhea will be happening there instead. Roger says I went to drive through McDonald's and acted like broken Matt Hardy. They laughed at me. And so they should. They should definitely laugh at you. 
Cal says, if you notice that we are seeing a similar storyline play out with Cody and Roman. Pardon me. But this year, Cody keeps getting the one-up, where last year it kept going against Cody. Is this a sign? No. Cal is celebrating Colicky Mansions. Wiggly says, if Asuka does miss WrestleMania through injury, might that be her final opportunity? Not necessarily, no. Blue says, Tom, I believe you mentioned Melsa lost all his sources in... No, I, I have not said that. It feels like he's reaping all his bad reporting from the last couple of months. That I've said, yes. And no point have I said he's lost all his sources. What I have said is that he's had a lot of bad weeks recently. A lot of very bad weeks recently. Yeah, Wiggly. So it's a bit of a fixer-upper. But the only way to fix a thicker... Thicker? But the only way to fix a fixer-upper is to fix it up with me. Okay, Jason, it sounds like a lot of work. Hopefully you get through it. I'm confident, primarily because stuff like the decorating I won't be doing. I will basically say, here's some money, go and make it work. The only room really that's going to be mine and just mine, so it'll be black and white, because I always do my bedrooms black and white, but I can't because it's going to be a shared bedroom, um, will be my office, because I'm going to have an office. Yes, Zane, I'll still be in the Blackpool area. <laughs> something like that, Joey, something like that. Uh, thank you for the good luck as well. And Marcel says, I hope you have a nice house soon. Fingers crossed. It's it's big, guys. I don't come from money, okay? I've never had money. This is the most secure I've ever been. I'm terrified, okay? I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm terrified. Things are going too well. I am too happy. In a way, I was reassured when the streams exploded because I had a moment of, hey, that feels better. That feels worse. I'm not happy. That feels more normal. Thank you very much, Squid. I appreciate that very generous donation. So say, Tom, hope you're doing well, mate. Doing very well. Thank you, Squid. I appreciate you. It felt like a return to normality because everything was falling apart. And when everything falls apart, I'm reminded of when I was growing up and I had nothing. And I have had nothing until about two years ago when I got a new job. Also had a bit of YouTube income coming in. And then I got five promotions in a year. Things have changed. And for the better. And I don't know. I'm trying to buy a house. A good house. A house that needs a hell of a lot of work. But a good house. Cross your fingers for me, guys. And as I say, any donations, any ad revenue, any channel memberships will go towards that house. Brad says, Lord Tom of Collie, you get that house. Technically, I do have a lordship. It was a whole thing. I was asked to lend some money to some friends who were buying land. The land came of a lordship. They were trying to tempt me and said, you can have the lordship if you want. What are we going to do with it? So technically, I do have a lordship. But they but like they did eventually pay me the money back. So I think I've lost it now. Roger, couldn't tell you. Wiggly says, we're still putting a deposit on a home. That is still a great milestone. It is when you're not living in London. The deposit in question, if it's 5%, would only be about £6,000. It's not 5%. Spider-Boss says, I think Beth Phoenix would beat up Nick Wayne's mom if she joins AEW. Leon says, hopefully you get the house. Good luck. Thank you, Leon. Uh, Chris says, any plans on doing a draft video like how you do the draft? Absolutely. PLE Wednesdays will be all over that. It'll be draft central. One says, Britt Baker was the only one that debunked Dave Meltzer's false reporting on heat and salary comments. The price TK and Mercedes Money didn't respond. Mercedes Money does not react to dirt sheets. Gal says, Tom, I know it's off topic. Off topic? Off topic, but do you... WWE's treatment of Sting was Vince's last laugh at WCW. No, he just didn't care about him. Uh, Bailey, NXT calls up, call-ups are planned and put together. They're just waiting for a draft to do it. Very true, Bailey. Kelly says, the Bray Wyatt documentary will start next Monday. Taylor says, a fixer-upper house helps build a family, in my opinion, puts so much love into the place and makes it a home. It's a very, very good way of looking at it, Taylor, and I appreciate you for saying that. Cal says, Viva La Blackpool. P wants a shed. I've never had a shed. I'm tempted. Ed says, sounds like I have a place to stay when I invade England. Hey, mate, you come on over. You know you're welcome. Wiggly says, that being political... 
then I'm not going to read it. I don't disagree, but I'm not going to read it. Roger says, will you have any wrestling merchandise in your new home? Probably, yes. At the very least, my youngest needs more Becky Lynch merchandise. And Squid says, I know I'm more of a lurker than a talker on here, but congrats on the house, man. I just purchased my first house a year ago and it's been great not living in apartments. Thank you, Squid. That's, that's very nice of you. Um, looking at the cost of a mortgage, I'd be paying less in a mortgage than I do for rent. And I'd be moving in with my family who pay their own rent, which is also more than I'd be paying for a mortgage. System is broken. It really is. WrestleFan says, will WWE have somebody sing America the Beautiful at WrestleMania 40 uh, for both nights? Yes, they will. Chris says, will we see Alexa Bliss again? Um, I'm not sure. Honestly, I can't think of anything that might hint to the arrival of Alexa Bliss at any time soon. Wiggly says, if I ever become famous, please invite me for tea. Interesting. Um, Spider-Boss says, do you agree with Roman in the Cody sounds like a politician? He's always sounded like a politician. That's his character. Martin says, good evening. Sorry I'm late. You are very welcome, Martin. You are never late. You always arrive precisely when you mean to, which sounded good in my head. And then I immediately realized this of Lord of the Rings reference. And now I feel like I'm cheating. Roger says, Adam Copeland says he's bringing the Cope Open back to AW now that he is a TNT champion. What the hell is a Cope Open? Anyway, I previously reported on John Cena's invite to WrestleMania 40. This is now being confirmed by the Wrestling Observer. Once again, my name is the initial reporter, conspicuous in its absence. They've also added that Steve Austin and The Undertaker both also being contacted. Now I can't speak for The Undertaker. I don't know or have any details on that one, but I can confirm Stone Cold Steve Austin has been approached by the WWE for WrestleMania as he was in fact last year as well. Fan speculation was rife on Twitter on Friday to include the idea that Steve Austin could back up Cody Rhodes against The Rock in the main event of night two. I'm expecting bloodline rules, so a little support in making the carnage happen would be welcome. The main event of this year's WrestleMania might be one of the most overbooked messes we've ever seen. Should be fun though. It also unfortunately needs mentioning that Dave Meltzer also claimed that Naomi and Bailey were hiding when they went to AW Dynamite to support the debut of Mercedes Money. He claimed they would be afraid to share a social media, social media video made during their time there. He claimed they would be afraid to share a social media video that they had already shared. Sounds very familiar to when Dave Meltzer reported that there was a stare down to tease a wrestling match between The Rock and Triple H and he was 10 years out of date. Ah. Still a little more news to come, a little more on Dave Meltzer unfortunately for him, a little on Tony Khan and a little bit on what we're doing on Twitter at the moment. Uh, Jay says, do you think Becky's book will get more eyes on her in Hollywood or does she not want to do it? Uh, she wants Hollywood and Hollywood want her. You know, unfair on that one, Carl. Age Car says, will we see Carmella again? Yep, she pops up backstage quite a lot at the minute. Taylor says, now that Vince is out, do you think WWE has any interest in signing MJF now? Vince McMahon was the one who's the most interested in signing MJF. They're actually less interested now than they were. One says, Alexa Bliss did put the eye emojis to Triple H's SummerSlam tweet. Spanabell says, my worry about Cody, it's once he finishes his story, that is there anything new to keep Cody over? Um, he'll have to work that out when we, when we come to it, cross that bridge, you know. Roger says, what wrestler past or present would you take out to dinner? I would take out ODB, who was in TNA. Oh, in every way, in every possible way, it would be Triple H, and you all know it. You all know it. Martin, thank you kindly. Very generous donation. Like, you guys are abs Thank you very kindly. This is evening, mate. Here's a little help towards a new internet provider. Thankfully, cross my fingers... Things are going pretty smoothly right now. What I will say, just to repeat what I said earlier, Martin, before you arrived, all proceeds now go towards repairs on the house that I'm putting in an offer for next week. Next week, I'm putting in an offer. I've got another viewing on Wednesday, speaking to my mortgage advisor tomorrow, and then I'm trying to buy a house. I've decided the one I want, I'm going for it. There's a lot of repairs I need doing. All donations will now go directly towards that. To trying to set up a future for my children. Thank you once again for that. Carl says, I was re-watching Cody versus Roman last night. Seriously, they just have to let Cody win. Yes, it's selfish, but just for me. Wrestler, is ask, wrestler fan is asking about Rey Mysterio. We do have something on Rey a little bit a little bit later. Spider Boss says, Who's your favourite female heel of all time? Rhea. 
Chris says, I'm baffled by that. MJF is an absolutely incredible talent. He's a full package. Promos, character work, in-ring work. He's a perfect guy for them. And they might be interested. But Vince McMahon was more interested. Wiggly, I don't have an expected move-in day. I haven't actually put an offering in the house yet. Like, I, I thought I was being clear on that. Joey says, do you think it could have been someone DDoSing the internet or was his provider causing problems? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I'm waiting to see. Michael, thank you very much. A, another very generous donation. Two gifted subs on the Twitch side. One to Speakeasy, one to Kuro. Thank you very kindly. That is extremely generous of you. I'm humbled by some of the generosity on display here. I'm eternally grateful that uh, you guys even come to my little corner of the internet and want to be involved. Thank you so much for it. Uh, so yes, I don't know, Joey. I've tried to reinstall the software. I've run spy, spyware and spybot stuff. Um, I've, I've run what I can to try and double check everything and try and make it work, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, another generous donation. Thank you very kindly. Uh, everyone seems to want to, me to get a house. Thank you very much. It says, Tom, you're doing a great job. When do you see Mercedes Money's debut match happening against who? Don't tell me we need to wait until Dynasty. Personally, I do think it's going to be the next pay-per-view. They're setting up a match with Willow. I still think uh, Julia Hart is uh, going to be one of the early matches for her as well. Thank you very much. Gal says, how many WrestleMania has Roman been in the main event? It's got to be at least five. I think it's eight at this point. Cal thinks MGF wouldn't work in the WWE. I disagree personally. Mine says, that's amazing, mate. Congratulations, and you deserve it. Thank you very much. Wigley says, are we going to have Ray versus Dom at WrestleMania? More on that shortly. And Spider Boss says, it surprised me we didn't see a one on one match between Mercedes Money versus Rhea on the main roster. Never got around to it. Mercedes Money was unfortunately unavailable during the big push that happened for Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley's only really being considered the top name in the division or one of since after Sasha Banks left the company. We have a little bit on Twitter now before we move to our next piece of news, which is as regards Tony Khan and Jack Perry. So the Asuka report did really well on Twitter. The one, in, in fact, where I reported that she'd been taken off the live shows in order to check an injury. Peter Insider would confirm it later. They would get more views, like 24 hours later, but, you know, we get what we get. Over 200 thousand views though is pretty damn good especially when you consider that if i can get five million views in three months twitch twitter starts paying me at which point i have another revenue stream to do house repairs now it's a shame that it was only picked up by a few places for example web is jericho picked it up and reported it which i thought was very nice uh, but praise should go to those places Popular opinion is now that Peter Insider actually reported it first instead of a day later, and I've already been accused of stealing their report. Wonderful. This, of course, happened the day after uh, Fightful Sean Ross Sapp said that I've convinced people that people steal my news. A day after he said that, Peter Insider report what I've already reported. Twitter is still growing, though. Views are up to an average of 26,000 per day from the 18,000 a day it was this time last week. At 55,000 a day, that's how we get to that 5 million. And that's when Twitter starts paying me. So I'm continuing to grow and continuing to build. You may have noticed a very different strategy on Twitter at the moment. And I thank everyone for their continued support, really helping Twitter to grow as well. We're also driving just under, at the moment, 19 views per day from Twitter to YouTube. And that number continues to go up. 19, I know, doesn't sound a lot, but they're views that I didn't have previously and they may convert to subscribers and people who view a lot more. They may convert to people in here, for example. And I think you'll, you'll notice that there are more people in here now when I advertise on Twitter. I didn't advertise tonight because I just there's a lot going on, as I explained at the beginning. This is all part of my strategy to reach a million views on YouTube. And thankfully, at the moment, everything is coming together nicely. Getting on to Tony Khan, Jack Perry and Dave Meltzer then. Dave Meltzer is also effectively being used for kayfabe now. We've spoken about how he's uh, essentially being called out by people like The Rock, but he's being used by AEW to build AEW storylines. The reports that Tony Khan and Jack Perry are effectively at each other's throats were completely incorrect. 
In fact, Khan and Perry, early in Perry's suspension, agreed that Perry would serve his suspension in New Japan, where emotions could cool off and he could build a character based on fantasy meeting reality. The two of them are not necessarily in love with each other, but they've seen how they can make money from the situation. It's funny that the, the Wrestling Observer reported that this was happening. The Wrestling Observer then reported that this isn't happening. But the Wrestling Observer didn't report, didn't apologize for reporting something that the Wrestling Observer reported as untrue. I expect Jack Perry to return to AW relatively soon. They're not the best of friends, but what they are is partners in crime. Perry has since clarified that Meltzer is incorrect, but apparently he only did this to Brian Alvarez, Meltzer's show host, stating that he has not apologized and that AEW refused to release him after he made that request. Instead, they moved for the current planned suspension and Meltzer is very effectively pushing the storyline for them. He'd be pushing it even stronger if not for the fact that The Rock called him the f*** out in a big way that he is not going to be recovering from. Funny. Michael says, and I appreciate you for this, I don't care what SRS says, you do good work, Tom. Thank you very much. And Spiderboss says, Roman only didn't main event Mania's 35 and 36. Also, like, one. He, he didn't main event WrestleMania 1. And that, I think that needs mentioning as well. I'm just going to click the love heart on a few of these very generous donations. Thank you very much, guys. Quite a few of them there. Quite a few. I'm very jealous. Very jealous of myself. That's what I just said. Oof. They said, any news on Charlotte Flair's recovery and return to WWE? She's ahead of schedule. I would expect around SummerSlam time. Carl says, could you use these donations for the Everton Striker Fund? Unfortunately not. Will I sing along to Cody's theme at Mania? Only two, two words. One is a woe and one is an O. Oh. Leon says, do you think Bobby Lashley will have a match at WrestleMania? Yes, I do. Carl says, if Drew doesn't win at WrestleMania, what happens? And Drew McIntyre loses. Martin says, how do AW get ratings up in your opinion? Only wondering as Adam Copeland and now Mercedes hasn't helped. No, but they've steadied the ship for now. And there is a big offensive going on in mainstream media to try and draw more attention to AEW. They're working on it. I'll see how it goes. Uh, Zane says, do you think Charlotte will return as a babyface or a heel? Babyface. Lisa hopes my new house doesn't have paranormal spirits or ghosts. I hope it does. I hope my poltergeist is there. Um, I have to explain this to my family. I'm not a, a uh, person who necessarily believes in that, but it's funny. So I have a poltergeist that every now and then just takes things and then brings them back as soon as you buy a new one. My family are not pleased. Roger says, do you watch any wrestling YouTubers? Not really. I watched Brian Zane for a while and then I just sort of moved on. Carl says, I don't know if it's just me. I'm so hyped for Mania. I feel like that young kid staying up towards The Rock versus John Cena. No, I'd be so excited for WWE again. Taylor says a real glass kid cost AW money and got a paid vacation to build a new character. Can't make this up. Yeah. That, that's pretty much it. Nothing particularly fancy there. Spider-Boss says SRS can himself. Wiggly says you won't be spending the money on football. Zane says is there any news on... I've read this one. We're catching up now. Cal says, Does the w do you think the WWE will ever mention Brock being the one to end Undertaker's streak? At some point, probably. H. Carl says, any news on Bo Dallas? No creative plans at this point in time, but he's still technically under WWE contract. They're not really pushing him to do anything in the actual front of house at the moment. Roger says, were you a fan of Billy and Chuck? Yes, I was. Dan says, evening. Evening, Dan. I'm liking what you're doing as a YouTube strategy at the moment right now. If you're interested in uh, seeing the Eve roster and actually getting a chance to connect with them, uh, there are live shows happening at the moment on uh, on Eve uh, Rye Girls of Wrestling YouTube channel that you can check out and you can ask your own questions. I really like that as a prospect and I think you can definitely dive in. It's very interesting. Yes, lovely Martin. Thank you. Um, I, unfortunately, a lot happening over the weekend. I wasn't able to attend. I really wanted to. But I do want to celebrate you for this. Martin says, just to give an update, Tom, we made just under £1,300 for the 12-hour charity stream for the Alzheimer's Society. Massively amazed. That is more than £100 per hour and justifies every minute that you are live. Congratulations. Well done. That is amazing work. Jay says, speaking of Charlotte, since Andrade is on Raw, is Charlotte going to be on there when she comes back? Not necessarily, no. 
KJ says quite rightly Andrade could be on Smackdown by the time she comes back. Kel says Tom I was re-watching the second Monday Night War between TNA vs WWE last night. It's crazy Hulk Hogan convinced them to go head to head. Chris says Andrade is now facing Giovanni Vinci. Kel says did you watch TNA's last pay-per-view? Matches were good but the production was very poor. Uh, I hear that one a lot unfortunately. No. KJ I didn't restart anything. Nobody else seems to be having any issues. Everything seems to be running through nicely. Don't do this to me, mate. Uh, Bailey, I've got a little bit on that one shortly, just to reiterate what I've said about what's happening at um, WrestleMania. Man says, thank you and no worries. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, mate. One says, is it kind of a risk for TK to make Mercedes money the face of AW? No. Spider-Bell says, all this tease about Liv Morgan's revenge tour and nothing happened. Yet. Okay, thank you guys. The stream is fine for everyone else. KJ, you might be having a moment. Chris says, it's time for the Great American Bash in Universe mode. Okay. Not here, it's not. Tony Khan is also said to be thrilled with the reception so far for Mercedes Money, Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada. Ratings are not being considered a major concern and staff are confident that the new creative team will be of more value long term than ratings will be short term. This is a new era, a new generation of AEW and they're not planning to force it. Backstage, this is being referred to as a new era if you'll forgive the WWE centric terminology. There are even some suggesting the Mercedes money has stepped into directly the gap left by CM Punk as not just Khan's new toy but his clear favourite. Eventually that's going to cause some issues. But reports are current about Mercedes money ruffling feathers backstage in AW are not to be believed. Also, the Slammies are returning to the WWE, but it's not just to do the voting thing and celebrate the ad revenue from it. Nope, the WWE creative team have suggested using CM Punk's near guaranteed win of the best return Slammy to keep building towards Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk at SummerSlam. There's actually a lot of excitement from creative for the Slammies. They have a lot of ideas and Triple H eventually said, you know what, you've got ideas, let's just do it. I think that's good management, personally. Thank you very much, guys. Cal says, do you think Heyman will turn on Roman down the line? He already did. Spiderball says, my only critic to 2K23, my rise mode is too short and storyline set you up to fail. KJ says, shouldn't ratings matter since their TV deal is up soon unless they're planning on going to a streaming service? They're not focused on ratings. I can't say they don't matter, but that's just not what they're focused on. Agreed, Crush. H card, we will get to talking about the uh, LWO storyline. Martin says, I am praying Rock turns as part of Cody's comment about destroying Roman's world overall, and that's what they really discussed. Would love to have that happen, but doubt it will. Joey says, Do you see TK letting go of people like Malachi Miro since Will Ospreay and Okada are there now? Yes, because their contracts will eventually expire, at which point they'll leave. Don't forget that come WrestleMania, we will be doing ourselves some big watch parties. There will be four days in a row of watch parties for WrestleMania. We will be hosting SmackDown beforehand, the Hall of Fame straight after. Still the same day, but it's another show. WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2, and Monday Night Raw. We will be hosting watch parties for all of those shows. Five shows in four days. Because why the hell not? Spider-Boss says NXT's ratings have declined ever since it defeated AW Dynamite on October 2023. Yeah, because they threw the, the Undertaker was there, mate. You don't get that every week. Joey says, do you know why Dom got involved with the Ray storyline? Yep. Crush says, I can see Miro, Malachi and Buddy Matthews back in WWE. Me too. Man says Rhea has now been mentioning Buddy in interviews, so maybe House of Black is more reality now. I mentioned it previously, WWE on the entire House of Black to just drop it straight back in. And Crush wants Rusev Day. Finally, and there's an update at the end of this uh, that will keep you interested. This was what I was going to report on Friday. Added at the end what I'm reporting now. There is a reason that Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar is taking place on SmackDown and is not currently planned for WrestleMania. 
Triple H is said to be concerned that Rey Mysterio was out of action too long and Santos Escobar wasn't able to keep the feud hot solo. The idea was to pivot to Carlito, but Carlito has been at best unreliable. The hope is that the plans for SmackDown can reheat the situation, but we'll see how that goes. The LWO do have a bit of a feel of window dressing at the moment, with a lot left to do to help their relevance. Carlito has failed to ignite, and WWE aren't exactly thrilled with their investment thus far. All of this was designed to tease what eventually would happen. Now that that moment has passed, I can confirm Dominic Mysterio has been brought in to reheat the feud between Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. It looks like we might be getting a rematch from last year's WrestleMania. Triple H does not want Dominic off the WrestleMania card. He's a big fan of how Dominic Mysterio has worked over the past year. And in fact, even before that, he's a big fan of ensuring that his top talents get top airtime. He wants Dominic Mysterio on Monday Night Raw, on SmackDown, and on every pay-per-view. That's what he wants. It will be about that, Martin, 24 hours after over four days. Six hours a day, works for me. I mean, I'll also be doing my day job still, you know. Uh, Zane, I've not looked it up as of yet. I think it'll be 1 a.m. Daylight Savings kicks in shortly. I think it's this weekend. Lisa says, this year's Rainier doesn't feel like WrestleMania. Last year was better. Three awesome storylines. Then says the LWO ripping off NWO. Yeah, that's exactly how they started. Spider Boss says Santos Escobar isn't that good in the mic, and his promo about why he betrayed Ray was weak. By the way, Dominic's best was when he faced Ray. Man says it did seem rushed in. Dominic back with Ray, but down for it. H Car says any news on Dragon Lee? Not at this point in time. Man just says power to you. Power to you. In the end, despite the fact we haven't even advertised this show, I've not pushed for likes or anything, we still managed to go for about an hour. I'm very happy with that. Not only that, but it seems like some of the changes I've made have worked. I've been tracking the overall CPU usage through the streaming software. Everything seems to be running smoothly. I'm really happy that nothing has absolutely imploded. Andrew says, I think the main main event between Roman and Cody on night two, I know this wouldn't happen, but imagine the pop if MJF did show up. Again, that means Cody's not winning. So I don't know about that. Leon says, a lot of factions on SmackDown have long, boring feuds of each other. I agree. We are going to wrap up there. We will be live again on Friday, and you'll be seeing plenty more of me, as usual, in the days to come. From this point, I will say, I've been Tom Collihue. You've been fantastic and I'll see you all very soon.